previous lesson, we began discussing this term that we call permutations. Permutations are just the number of ways that a set or a group of things can be rearranged when the order of those things matters. Today we're going to take a look at what happens when some of those things in your group are identical to other things that are in your group. Does that change the number of permutations that are possible? Let's first start with an example that will be easy to understand. First, we want to find all of the possible combinations for the letters in the word DOLE, D-O-L-E. We don't just want to calculate it, let's actually write out what each possible combination is. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the letters in the word DOLE. Notice how the E is changed to an L. Are there the same, more, or less unique combinations than when we have to spell the word DOLE? Finally, we'll do the same thing for the word LOL, L-O-L-L, -L, and see again if we have more or less or the same number of combinations. And then maybe once we see all these, we can see if there's a general rule we can make uh, to deal with permutations when some of the elements are the same. You can see that we're repeating the L a few times in some of these words. But let's first start by writing out all the combinations of the word dole. The easiest way to do this might be to just start with the word dole and then keep the letter D the same and rearrange the other letters in the word. So if we start with the word dole, D-O-L-E, we can then write another word that uses the same well, two letters, D and O, and then just switch the E and the L. So there's another combination of letters for the word dole. And then keep the D the same again, and now just change the second letter. So let's start with the L, and then we're left over with the O and the E. And we can use the same pattern by keeping the D and the L the same, and then just rewriting the E and the O. If we continue this pattern, here are the rest of the permutations that would be made. We can see that there are 24 different words that can be created by rearranging the letters of the word dole. Part 2 asks what would happen if we changed to find the permutations of the word doll, D-O-L-L. -L. Essentially, we're changing the E in the word dole to an L. Well, one way that we can write out all the permutations is to take the 24 current permutations that we have and just change all the E's to L's. This is what that would look like. Notice how I still have 24 different words written down. However, some of these words are the same as other words that I've already written. I'll highlight the words in green the first time they're written down, and then if they're repeated, I'll put them in red. Here's what that looks like. It now looks like we only have 12 different permutations of the word doll. Okay, let's see what happens now when we change the D in the word doll to another L to make lol. How many different words will we make now? When all of these are written out, a lot of them are repeated. And if we count how many original ones there are, this is what we end up with. There are only four unique permutations of the word lol. Let's now try to figure out how mathematically we could have figured this out, rather than needing to write them all down. To find the different permutations of the word dole, we already know how to do this. Since there are four different things in our group, and we're trying to rearrange all four of them, this is simply 4 factorial. We know 4 factorial is going to be equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 24. So what now changes when we change all the E's to L's? Any time we have a different permutation where those E and L are switched in the word, those different combinations are now considered a repetition because the E is actually an L. So when we look at all of these different permutations written out, these two right here are the same. But in the original when we were trying to spell dole, this was D-O-L-E and this one was D-O-E-L. You can see that the two L's here are now the same because the E's turned into L's. So what we've done is we've duplicated all the times where the E and the L had switched positions. Well, how many times do the E and the L switch positions? They switch positions two factorial times for every different word that can be created. So if we started with 24 different ways and we divide those 24 ways by 2 factorial, which is the number of ways that we can rearrange the E and the L when we change the E to an L, 
we end up with 24 divided by 2, which is just equal to 12. The same can be said when we're now trying to rearrange LOLL. -L -L. The D now just changed to an L. So from our 24 original ways, we now need to divide by the total number of ways that those three letters, the L, the D, and the E, which are now all L's, can be rearranged, because every single rearrangement of those ends up looking the same. So three things can be rearranged three factorial ways. And 24 divided by 3 factorial, which is 6, is equal to 4. So that's how we come up with four different words. So here's the general rule. The number of permutations of a set of n objects that contain a number of identical objects of one kind and b number of identical objects of a second kind, and they could also contain c number of identical objects of a different kind and d number of identical objects of a different kind and so on and so forth, is equal to this. n factorial, which is the total number of ways that you can find permutations of n things, but divided by a factorial times b factorial times c factorial times, and then you keep continuing on for all the different identical objects. What we're doing is we're taking away or reducing the number of different permutations by taking out all the duplicates. Let's look at example two. In how many ways can you arrange all the letters in the word Toronto to make distinct words? So again, we're going to count out the number of letters in the word Toronto. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven different ways that the letters in the word Toronto can be arranged. We've seen that seven things can be arranged in seven factorial ways. But we also notice that there are some repetitions in the word Toronto. For instance, the T is repeated twice and the O is repeated three times. So we need to take away those repetitions from the number of distinct words. So the two T's will can be rearranged amongst themselves two factorial times, and the three O's can be rearranged amongst themselves three factorial ways. So the total number of ways that we can make words is seven factorial over two factorial times three factorial. And when you get your calculator and figure out what this equals, you'll end up at 420. What about all the arrangements of the letters in the word Toronto that must begin with the letter T? The strategy that we're going to use here is to place a letter T at the beginning of the word and anchor it there. And then we're going to try to rearrange all the other letters that are there. So let's start by putting a T out in front. All of these other letters now need to be arranged. Of these letters, there are six spots that we can fill them in. So we're going to be able to rearrange these or find permutations in six factorial ways. But again, there's some repetition in some of the letters that are still existent. We have one, two, three different O's that we have to worry about. So those can be arranged in three factorial ways. And even though this T is the same as the T that's out in front, because that original T is anchored there, I don't need to worry about a repetition in T's. So six factorial divided by three factorial, let's do this without a calculator. Remember, we can divide out the 3 factorial from the 6 factorial. We'll be left with 6 times 5 times 4. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. If the rule changes that now we need to end in a t, how does that change the math? Well, let's write out what spaces we'll need to fill. Not much changes in the mathematics. We still have the T anchored at the end, which leaves us with six dashes that we need to fill with the six letters. So again, there's six factorial ways to do that. And again, there's only three repetitions of the O. All the other letters that are there are only there once. So just because we changed the T from the beginning to the end doesn't change the number of total words that are possible to be made, which still exists at 120. Here's a variation of the same types of questions. How many different seven digit telephone numbers contain three fives, two twos, and two ones? Well, when we write out the numbers that are possible, we see that we have seven numbers and seven spots to fill. Well, 
seven numbers and seven spots to fill means there's seven factorial ways those can be arranged. But we do have some repetition. We have three fives, which can be arranged in three factorial ways, two twos, which can be arranged in two factorial ways, and two ones, which can be arranged in two factorial ways. So seven factorial divided by three factorial times two factorial times two factorial, which is equal to six times two times two, or 24, is equal to 210 different ways. Okay, let's take a look at a word that has a lot of letters that are repeated. How many different words can we make using all the letters in the word Mississippi? And we're gonna look at three different things. One, if there's no restrictions, the word must end with the letter I, or if the word can't end in the letter I. Hmm. Let's start with no restrictions. We've seen a lot of these types now, so let's first count the number of different letters that exist. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 different letters in Mississippi. So there's 11 factorial ways that those can be arranged. But because we have some repetition, we need to divide away the number of times things are repeated. So the letter I is repeated one, two, three, four ways. The number S is repeated one, two, three, four times. And the letter P is repeated twice. So on your calculator, you're gonna figure out 11 factorial divided by four factorial times four factorial times two factorial. Remember, you may need to put this in brackets so that your calculator can understand what it's trying to calculate and you'll end up with 34,650 ways. That'd be a lot to count out if you have to write them all out. What if the word must now end in the letter I? Again, this is exactly like the Toronto example. So we're gonna place one of the I's at the end of the word, or we can just ignore one of the I's that are there. So now let's try to rearrange the 10 remaining letters. Well, they can be arranged in 10 factorial ways. Again, I have now only three I's that are repeating, since one of them is anchored at the end, the four S's that are there, and the two P's that are there. This ends up equaling 12,600 ways. Part C asks, how many ways can we rearrange Mississippi if the word cannot end in an I? This might mean that we have to figure out the number of ways in which we can spell the word Mississippi or rearrange the word Mississippi so that it ends with an M, or it ends with an S, or it ends with a P. So there's three different cases that we can do. But there is a quicker way to do that, and that's to use an indirect method. Remember, the indirect method says, well, let's find out all the possible ways that we can rearrange something, and then we'll subtract all the ways in which it's not something we want. So in this case, we will subtract the number of ways in which it does end with an I. Coincidentally enough, we've already figured out those two numbers. So the total number of ways in which we can rearrange the letters in the word Mississippi are 34,650. And the total number of ways in which those rearrangements end in an I is 12,600. So when we subtract those, we end up with the total number of ways it doesn't end with an I, or 22,050. One last question to ponder. Can there ever be a case where the denominator is larger than the numerator? And here's what I mean by that. If we take a look at our formula for repetition of elements that we are trying to rearrange, n factorial over a factorial times b factorial times c factorial times, and then who knows how many more. Can we ever have a case where the number on the denominator is greater than the number in the numerator? The answer to this is no. If we think about this contextually, it doesn't make sense that we could have a fraction where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, because remember, this is telling us how many ways things can be rearranged. We can't have a fraction for the number of ways that some things can be arranged. It has to be a positive whole number. So if we think of it in context, there's no way that the denominator can be greater than the numerator. 
If we think about mathematically, that is also true. Remember, the, le the numbers for A and B and C all come from how many elements there were to begin with. So A plus B plus C plus however many more things that there are that are repeating can never be more than the number of elements that there were to begin with. And since n factorial ways contains n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so forth, that number will always be greater than if we just multiplied lesser factorials together. So a factorial times b factorial times c factorial. It just mathematically works out that way. So now you know what happens when we have to rearrange different permutations of things where there's identical elements. Good luck on your homework, and we'll see you next time.